start off by saying everything's under control. No way that this isn't all under control. Staying in my own lane to begin with, we got video of plasma fingers. Exactly as I've been describing them since I started analyzing these uh, plasma fires where the trees burn from the inside out. It also coincides with the EMPCO, Electromagnetic Plasma Changeover Event. Now we all know that Mia's new BS pair of glasses, there was something wrong with that, but there might be some truth in that theory. In fact, it may just coincide with magnetic pole reversal. When the magnetic field disappears, nothing stops the solar plasma. We've been seeing the colorful clouds that NB333 always says only appear in the Arctic Circle in, in, the, uh, in the Antarctic, I suppose, but you can't go there. We saw the Aurora Borealis in New Mexico. I'll include the links in the description to everything I'm saying from this point forward. And so, as the GPS is off 30% of the time now on my Garmin, and there are other reasons. Uh, he monitors the Schumann cavity resonance. Anyway, plasma fingers. Donnie Daytona, using his drone and his regular camera that he always uses, I guess because the atmospheric conditions were just right, caught images of these plasma fingers reaching down from the sun and dancing all over the ground like this. The same way I've described them for about two years now, when I use the reference of the plasma lamp that you can buy on Amazon for 30 bucks, Google it, you'll see what I'm saying, plasma ball lamp. It's a coil of metal in the middle where electricity goes up and through and does some special trick and a glass globe around that piece of metal and these little plasma fingers dance around from that metal around the glass globe and wherever you touch it they all concentrate on your finger or if you put your whole hand down they'll kind of concentrate on your whole hand and make the shape of a hand and keep tickling your hand and you'll have a few stragglers over here and over there that's what these are they're like little lightning bolts and you can see them coming from the sun I believe the directed energy weapons happens when they do something like touching the glass globe on the outside, concentrating all of those. Rumor has it that something called SMAC, S-M-A-C-C, -C, Solar Magnetic Amplification Causative Configurator, using Tesla technology, you know, remember seeing that picture of Tesla with all those great big giant lightning bolts streaking around the room all around him? Same thing, he was inside of a plasma lamp, as are we. And that energy can be directed, just like touching the glass globe, they create a ground somewhere where it all concentrates and you get the effects of Paradise, California, Notre Dame Cathedral, Australia, Tianjin, China, and New York 9-11. Though these are all different technologies, the fire technology in particular, New, Le New York 9-11 is the outlier of what I just named. Tianjin, China, thousands of cars had their glass melted out and their aluminum handles melted and all their aluminum rims melted on a sea of asphalt where there's no fuel for any kind of fire and car fires don't burn that hot. So I'll include two links in the description from Donnie Daytona. One is the original footage of these plasma fingers that he calls, you know, a microwave energy or something. He's, I think he kind of knows what it is. And the second one, they're both about five minutes long, the second one is close-up and slow-mo of individual plasma fingers as they're doing this, because you kind of see them all doing this, but they look just like what I've been describing. So it indicates that my understanding of how these fires work is probably accurate. It's confirmation. The lightning bolt goes into the ground and then comes up through the tree, burning it from the inside out. And... All of the burn patterns on all of the forests that we see that I've documented, you cannot reproduce those burn patterns. Not with a gasoline, not with torch, not with nothing but huge amounts of electricity from the inside. Anyway. Hold that thought. I'm setting goals for myself here since I've been slacking on the gravy and it's just piling up. By the end of this three or four different segment series, I can only record 15 minutes at a time, I will get around to this diagram, which came to me in words, I just put it in a diagram, and I will explain it mostly in words, but I'll also add this little diagram that I made. That's your consciousness, 
that's your shallow, your deepest desires and intentions. That's your shallow desires and intentions. That's your outwardly focused attention. And this is a film strip that is the equivalent of how this reality generation chamber works. How your mind turns the matrix into a reality. That membrane right there between your inner world and your outer world. This is the 3D world. And the world as we know it is like a movie and the projector is on your forehead and you're creating this outer world from your inner world. And there is a nexus between the two. And that film strip that runs between your inner world and your outer world takes a request from your intentions and desires and manifests an experience in the external world that gives you angles of awareness and understanding and degrees of consciousness about that thing which you had an inner desire and intention to know about. As a result, you have this outward experience which circles back around and gives you a new desire or intention. Intentions are emotional desires. There are the masters of this world who have figured out how to create experiences in the out outer world to basically cut off the flow. And instead of you having an intention and a desire and it passing through this membrane, this film strip, God, if you will, it's how God turns your inner world into your outer world. And then this film strip passes right through here. This is your light of Christ. It projects onto the film strip. That's your consciousness, your inner knowing of right and wrong, true and false. It passes through this film strip, which takes a request, an order from your inner being as to what you would like your inner desire and intentions, what you would like to develop in this existential world of experiential learning. Through these experiences you have out here on the screen, it circles back around, like down here, <laughs> and gives you another desire and intention based on this experience you had. And through that desire and intention, you project it through this film strip again, and that film strip runs through right here, picks up your desire and intention, creates an experience out here that circles back in and down and creates another desire and intention. This is your attention, your outwardly focused attention. And they, the controllers, create experiences out here in the world, say this one over here, that is in alignment with your shallow desire and intentions. These are your deeper desire and intentions. That's your animal instinct. That's your higher consciousness. And they keep your attention focused on experiences out here in this external world that keep your attention and your inner desire, your intention, in alignment with something that's in your shallow. Animal instinct, self-preservation, fight, fight or flight reflex in response to a threat, territorial dominance, hierarchy of authority, and this comes about as a result of fear that is created through the perceived threat. In this way, they get you to focus your attention on your shallow, superficial, superficial desires and intentions. What, what is that? Survival, self-preservation. That's your most shallowest, immediate instinct. It's an animal instinct. It takes you down into your lower limbic system of awareness and you become more animalistic. Since I'm on the subject, I'll just skip straight to that part. I have decided for myself that I would rather die a conscious being than live like an animal. There's the other side of the coin too that says I would rather die on my feet than live on my knees. And I would not submit myself to a tyrannical dictatorship and live life as a slave after having known the freedoms I have already. But after having developed the consciousness that I have already, I'm not going to give any of it away in a final act of animalistic behavior, self-preservation, mitigation and minimization of pain and suffering, and give away piece of the consciousness that I came here to acquire, that I have acquired. I would rather die a conscious being than live like an animal, but one of the big dividers here is some people aren't ready to go. A lot of people aren't ready to die, as someone told me recently. And the amount of fear that's embedded in that statement, I mean, he said it straight up, I'm not ready to die, and I believe all of it, and, and, and I'm quarantining everyone, and y'all need to wear masks, and the whole bit. 
I don't want to die, but I'm not afraid of it. Survival is not my pri uh, priority. It's not my number one objective. Self-preservation and perpetuation of this life and this physical incarnation is not my number one objective. For most people, that's not true. And it is hard, even when you've developed consciousness, to keep from going back down into that lower, limb lower limbic system. Animalistic. Dog eat dog, kill or be killed. Biggest dog, biggest bark. Survival of the fittest. I gotta eat, so somebody's gotta die. And I think everyone sees that we're on the brink. So I've decided for myself, I will not take from someone else because I need to eat. There's the flip side of the coin too. I will protect innocence, but I will not commit violence on someone to protect myself or uh, mitigate pain and suffering or survival or self-preservation. I'm not that afraid of leaving here. I'm kind of stoked to see what's on the other side, but I have no urgency to get there. I'd kind of like to see what's going down here and what's going to happen when this all washes out. Having said that, I'm going to get to some of the uh, potentialities here that we're looking at. Starting with the most obvious. The proportion, the quality, and the quantity of the movements that we've seen in government and corporations and everything else in a coordinated, synchronized event like you would see a move through uh, infratards. Infraguards, I'm sorry. You know, those guys that are given a little badge and said, you're a secret agent man now. We need your company and corporation to cooperate with the government as part of the InfraGuard to guard the critical infrastructure of society as the continuity of government. Continuity of government is that plan where they all get in their underground bunkers, wait for the shit to happen, and then a few pop up and say, I guess we are what's left. That's continuity of government plan, COG. As part of that, they have cooperated with corporations. That's why Walmart's cutting the flow of toilet paper to the shelves to create the perception of the threat because you can feel the threat when you see empty shelves. Keeping you focused in that outward survival mode, fight or flight or freeze. But anyway, everything we see is more commensurate with an incoming asteroid that could flip the magnetic field since it's already so low or hit the moon or us and we're seeing that asteroid coming in. Even if we didn't see that asteroid coming in, what we're seeing should make you think something more like asteroid than flu. I described, I talked about it three weeks ago. Since I've made my videos, I'm way past the point of needing to tell you this is fake like I was before, showing you that. Wu By the way, the Wuhan newsmonger. I haven't watched that channel for about three weeks, but when I did, their first video was three weeks ago and it got like five million views. Sorry, their second video. Their first video was some lame ass things about Chinese New Year. Their second video got like five million views and they got a few other videos that are over one and a half, two million. The only way you get that kind of saturation into the market with there's so many content providers is if YouTube is pushing your propaganda. I'll include a link in the description. Newsmonger had been around since 2017, but they failed to produce a single video until a month and a half ago now, maybe, right when this all started. Chinese New Year was their first video. Their second video was on the coronavirus, and it got like 5 million views. You don't just go viral these days. It is not the people's choice. The algorithms are gamed. Oh, and by the way, people have been saying that there's not as much censorship lately as of the last few weeks, and I can attest to that. My channel gets a few new subscribers a day now. It didn't before three weeks ago. It was highly restricted. Anyway, what we are seeing proportionately, the quality and the quantity of the movements we're seeing, military equipment rolling around, all these contingency plans being activated, preparing the public, getting them to ready to shelter in place, halfway getting them to stock up on food without trying to get them to get too scared, but pretty scared, dial it back and forth. There's no way, everybody knows, this is back to what I was saying, you either, there's a division between those who are smart enough to see it and courageous enough to say it and those who aren't. At this point, everyone is smart enough to see it, it, I will define, and those who say they believe everything is as the, the news says it is, are just not courageous enough to say it. They are, they're not even fooling themselves. They're putting on a face. 
saying I trust in government, even though none of this makes sense, even though we're seeing 10,000 times the disproportionate response to the 60,000 that have died this year, which is less than the 80,000 that died last year. Thus, we should only have three quarters of the response we had last year, and last year we had zero, so this year we should have three quarters of that same zero. No one believes that the only thing going on is what we see on the surface. When they say, I believe it, they don't believe that everything they see occurring is, like they say in court, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Nobody believes that this response is in response to coronavirus, only coronavirus, and nothing but coronavirus, and there's no other agenda going on here. Everybody knows. The only ones that say they don't believe anything's going on here, other than honest, everyone's playing their cards face up and doing everything they can and being straightforward with the public, and there's no other agendas being at play, no one believes that. No one. Problem is, they didn't call out 9-11 over the last 20 years, so now that they're running the same exact operation again, all those same people who never called it out before are incapable of calling it out now. All those same people who saw it for what it was when it happened or any time during the last 20 years are able to now look at what's happening and go, aha, same exact operation. Waiting for them to come out with the color wheel of the threat code of the day. You know, red to yellow, or red, orange, yellow, blue and green. Remember the threat level of the day color coded? So they have your fear and anxiety on a dial and can dial it up and down. They're doing that today with the numbers. They tell you the numbers today that are worse than the numbers yesterday. And when you actually look at the numbers, they're less than the year of last year. And many of the medical staff are coming out and saying that we're getting asked to do post-mortem uh, death certificates and revise it to say that the cause was COVID. We got a one-year-old over here that drowned in a pool that they labeled with COVID. A lot of the medical facilities are starting to recognize and that whole empty emergency room is such a phenomenon. I don't have to harp on it anymore and tell you this is fake. Everybody knows. I'm going to tell you some other potentialities. The ship, the vessel, is being boarded They've been hitting these directed energy weapons for the last couple of years, letting us know that they were serious. And now, like when the Navy destroyer goes out to a vessel at the high seas and says, we're going to commandeer this vessel, they send a couple speedboats up to the edge and let them know, we're coming aboard, we're coming aboard. That was the directed energy weapons. Then the big ships come alongside the ship and board, kind of like the two that are on the east and west coast right now. Remember me saying the cat's away, the mice will play God, but the cat's back? And the mice are all in. Whatever this is going down, I'll give a few ideas, not saying I'm sure on any one of them. The comet thing seems most logical and reasonable. Based on proportion of the response, the quality and quantity of the movements we're seeing, that comet seems a likely cause of what it is we're seeing. Far more likely than the flu that they're trying to fake and getting caught doing it. But here's the other thing. They're not getting caught doing it. They leave us pissed on breadcrumbs to find, as Matt from Quantum of Conscience says. One particular incident, now we're seeing half-inflated mannequins. Uh, the medical staff are coming out. There's people that are... Uh, Tucker Carlson, I'm going to include a link in the description. He ran some numbers on his show, and he said, this isn't mean of me to show you the numbers. These are facts, and they don't hurt your feelings. Tucker Carlson's on board and doing everything he can to push for logic and reason in this time of insanity. But in the time of universal deceit, telling the truth is a revolutionary act. So he's doing what he can. But it should give you a little bit relief that he says they're dialing it back now. The truther world is all a flutter. Trying to figure out what's going down, what's coming. Is this a test run for something big or is this the big one? Did they do a test run and decide to go live with it mid-swing? Since it was going so well, and what is the it they decide to go live with? Meanwhile, we're all sitting around looking at each other going, they came and took it all. Well, like Don Henley sang about, while you were sleeping, they came and took it all. It was an inside job by the well-connected. And we're all sitting around looking at each other going, they took the world away. They stole the world. And we're like that lady that was waiting and said, what have you given us? A republic? A democracy? A monarchy? And he said, a republic, ma'am, if you can keep it. Well, apparently we couldn't, and we're waiting for them to come out of this room to tell us what they've given us as a replacement.